Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer practice lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this and share these videos with anyone else studying for the CCNA. This configuration lab and the next troubleshooting lab will be the last labs in my series of labs for the CCNA. I was expecting to finish them by the end of the year, but with the approaching changes to Cisco certifications coming in February next year, I wanted to finish these soon so you have plenty of time to practice them and get your CCNA before the changes. So, I've managed to put out a video almost every day for over a month, and finally we're at the end. Stay tuned for my next project, which I'm really excited about. Anyway, this isn't the last video, the next one is, so let's get started. First, I want to mention just one thing about the lab. Normally, private IP addresses can't be routed over the internet. In my NAT labs, I configured ACLs to simulate that. However, I haven't done so in this lab, so you won't have to use NAT to send traffic over the internet cloud, which is here in the middle. In this review lab, we will configure BGP, OSPF, EIGRP, GRE, and PPP. There are two enterprises, Enterprise A and Enterprise B, which are connecting to the same internet service provider. Enterprise A uses OSPF and wants to configure a GRE tunnel between two branches. Enterprise A also uses static routing over fiber ethernet to connect to the internet rather than BGP. Enterprise B uses EIGRP in its internal network, connecting to the ISP with BGP over a PPP serial connection. Let's configure Enterprise A first. The first step is simple. That is to configure static routes to the internet on R1 and R2. Often, BGP isn't necessary, and static routes are sufficient for internet connectivity. For Enterprise B's connection too, a simple static route would work, but they want to use BGP. Anyway, let's configure the static route on R1 first for Enterprise A. Enable conf t ip route 0.0.0.0 0 0.0.0.0 Then I can specify the outgoing interface or the next top IP address. It doesn't really matter which. I'll use the interface, G000. That's it. Let's do the same on R2. Enable conf t IP route 0.0.0.0.0.0.0 G000. That's it. Next, let's configure a GRE tunnel from R1 to R2, which is a logical tunnel interface which will allow them to behave as if they are directly connected and share OSPF routes, even though traffic between them actually passes through the service provider network. I'll start here on R2. Let's make the interface. Interface tunnel zero. Let's configure the source and destination addresses. These are the actual physical interface addresses on R2 and R1. Tunnel source g000 tunnel destination 203.0.113.2 which is the ip address of r1's g000 interface now let's give it an ip address from the 192.168.12.0/30 network as per the instructions ip address 192.168.12.2 255.255.255.252. Okay, that's all. Exit. Now let's configure our one side. Interface tunnel zero. Tunnel source G000. Tunnel destination 203.0.113.6, which is the IP address of R2's G000 interface. IP address 192.168.12.1, 255.255.255.252, 
Exit. Okay, let's try to ping from one end of the tunnel to the other. Do ping 192.168.12.2. Okay, we can ping from one side of the tunnel to the other. Finally, let's configure OSPF on R1 and R2. I'll start here on R1. Router OSPF 1. Remember, the OSPF process ID is locally significant and doesn't have to match between routers. We should activate OSPF on the G00 and Tunnel 0 interfaces of R1 and R2. So, here on R1, network 192.168.1.0 0.0.0.255 area 0. That's G00. And network 192.168.12.0 0.0.0.3 area 0. That's tunnel 0. Now let's configure R2 and see if they exchange OSPF routes. Router OSPF1 network 192.168.2.0 0.0.0.255, area 0. Network 192.168.12.0, 0.0.0.3, area 0. That's all that's necessary for a simple OSPF configuration. Okay, let's wait for 10 seconds or so for them to become neighbors and exchange routes. Then I'll check the route table. Okay, let's check that routing table. Do show IP route. There's the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network, which R2 learned from R1. Do show IP OSPF neighbor. There's R1 and the neighbor state is full as expected. Okay, that's all for the configuration of Enterprise A. Let's go to Enterprise B. The first requirement is to configure PPP with CHAP authentication to connect to the ISP. The ISP side is already configured, so let's go on R3. Enable. First, let's just confirm that we can't ping the ISP yet. Ping 203.0.113.9. Okay, it doesn't work. Conf T. We're going to use CHAP authentication, so for that we need to configure a user account here on R3, which uses the hostname of the remote host, in this case ISP, and a password, which is the same between the two routers, in this case CCNA. So, username ISP, password CCNA. Now let's configure the interface. Interface S000. I'm going to shut down the interface as I configure it, then enable it when I'm done. That can help the interface come up quicker. Shut down. Okay, first set the encapsulation. Encapsulation PPP. Then set the authentication. PPP authentication chap. That's all there is to it. No shutdown. Okay, let's wait a few seconds. Okay, and let's try a ping. Do ping 203.0.113.9. Okay, now the ping works. Next, let's configure EIGRP on R3 and R4. I'll start here on R3. Router EIGRP 100. Remember, the EIGRP AS number has to be the same on routers for them to become EIGRP neighbors. Now let's advertise these networks. Network 203.0.113.8 0.0.0.3 Network 192.168.3.0 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0.0.0.255 0
0.0.0.255, network 192.168.34.0.0.0.255. Let's make R3's S000 interface passive, since no EIGRP neighbors are connected to that interface. Passive interface S000. Now let's configure R4. Enable conf.t router EIGRP 100 network 192.168.34.0.0.0.255 network 192.168.4.0.0.0.255 Okay, let's check if R4 has learned EIGRP routes from R3. Do show IP route. There we go, 192.168.3.0, R3's internal network, and 203.0.113.8, the internet segment from R3 to ISP. Let's try a ping from PC4 to PC3. Now that R4 knows the route to 192.168.3.0. Ping 192.168.3.100. Okay, the ping works. Finally, let's configure eBGP on R3 to connect to the internet, rather than the static route method we used on R1 and R2. Note that Enterprise B uses BGP AS 65000, and the ISP uses 65001. Okay, let's get started. Router BGP 65,000. Now let's specify the neighbor. Neighbor 203.0.113.9, remote AS 65,001. Also, let's advertise our internal networks. Network 192.168.3.0, mask 255.255.255.0. Remember that BGP uses a standard network mask not a wildcard mask. Network 192.168.34.0, mask 255.255.255.0. Network 192.168.4.0, mask 255.255.255.0. Okay, that's all for BGP. Now, step four asks why PC1 can't ping PC4. Let's confirm and try that ping from PC1. Ping 192.168.4.100. Indeed, the ping fails. We're given a hint to look on R4, so let's go on R4. What do you think would be the most obvious issue? How about no route to PC1? Do show IP route. As you can see, R4 has no route to the 192.168.1.0/24 network or any other network beyond R3. Usually, I'd configure IBGP or route redistribution into EIGRP, but those are more advanced topics. Let's use the simplest solution a static route pointing to R3. Exit, IP route 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
There is only one more lab left in my CCNA series, but please subscribe to catch my next project. If you want to support my channel, I accept cryptocurrency donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.